Welcome to Destiny Moments with Eunice. And once again, Happy New Year. This is 2016. And you know what? You're expecting a lot in 2016. It's profitable evidence. On set with me today, I have an adorable lady. A lady who is a delight in your homes. Every morning I can bet she's a delight in your homes, in your offices. The adorable host of My View Breakfast TV show on Television Continental. The director of programs in TV Continental. A mother, a wife, a beautiful woman. Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't sat with me today. Moriah Afolabi Brown. So nice to have you indeed. Thank you. Mariah, so much I know about you, I have said. So who is Mariah Afolabi Brown? Well, as you said, I'm director of programs at TV Continental. I also anchor your view, which is a breakfast show Mondays to Fridays. Um, I'm a wife, just like you also said. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a career woman. Um, I'm a Christian. I go mm -hmm. to redeem Christian children of God. Um, I've just always wanted to be on television. I've always wanted to impact lives. So I believe I'm living my dreams and I thank God for that. Mm. You're um, sure living your dreams. Because I mean, as we watch you on TV, you're just living your dreams, really. <laughs> you're happy to do it. Yeah. And you're doing it. You're carrying it so adorably. Thank you very much. Wow. Maria, like I said, you were somebody I considered so all together. Thank you. What was growing up like? Growing up was great because um, I had, my father was an activist, he was a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, so he was a lawyer, he was um, growing up in the house with my dad, was, he brought you up to be an activist, um, he was a former Alawa Kabasha, and um, it was, I, I went to Corona Primary and Secondary School then and it was a bit shielded but I grew up with that drive to be impactful in my society, that was, my father was was always on the newspapers talking and you know critiquing government and I just felt that you know what as a young person I must be part of the the, 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 the new society I'm looking for mm -hmm. and I'm the change that I want Nigeria to be so I always grew up looking forward to the opportunity to lead at some point and you you, you really did yes I'm during the elections you were like oh my god I just yeah. said, I hope she's not going to contest mm -hmm. do no. you hope do you hope to I, I, I'm not sure that's my that's my focus. Um, maybe I don't want to jump too far. Yeah. Let us take a great step at it. Never I've say always, never. Yeah, remember, well, I've always tried to follow Abike Dabiri, mm -hmm. and I've always I always admired her growing up. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to just first of all do my thing in my little space. Gradually, eventually, if that opportunity opens up, maybe in future. But for now, I'm taking it a step at a time. You were um, a, a very strong activist during the political era. Well, you. Mara, you can't deny that. I wasn't, I'm not denying that. As a TV person, yeah. I'm not actually entitled to have a view or an opinion on the politics. Mm -hmm. But the idea really was just... But you had all the same. I just wanted Nigeria to be better. I could care less who was... In here. what direction did you want Nigeria better? I wanted change. I'm not going to act like I didn't. Change. I wanted okay. change. And, yeah. I, and I believe in the change mantra like most Nigerians did. Uh, is so, change, are you seeing change? I believe so. Um, yeah. I think it's gradual. I think Nigerians should be patient. Um, we've been in this mess for 16 good years, so I think we should give this new, this new government some time to, to, to bring the change that we all expect. And we, I, I think we really need to tell Nigerians this, because you see, yeah, we've been in that whole mess for more than 16 years, yes. not just 16 years, yes. actually for more than 16 yes. years. But even if we hadn't been, I mean, a child is born into a new system. Yeah. The child needs time. Certainly. It needs time to adapt yeah. to the change. It's going to be tough. I mean, yeah. President has already told us that this is going to be tough, especially with the economy. But mm. we're Christians. We don't want to believe in that. We, we believe God's economy. Yeah, we believe that if we're ready, if everybody's ready to work honestly, it will not be as tough as exactly. it may look. Exactly. Especially that the focus is, you know, fishing out and dealing with corruption. Yeah. Because that's the problem we have, really. Absolutely. And yeah. if there's somebody like we know, like it clearly looks that there's somebody to deal with corruption. I'm sure we'll be fine I in believe no so. Time. I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mora, have you been in the rough at all? Have you been... Have there been struggles here and there at all? Oh, they're having. Oh, absolutely. Everybody. You sure? 
Even though that seems to have had it easy. It looks, it looks fine. It looks yeah, like it's yeah, always been rosy. Yeah, it hasn't always been rosy. There have been times we've been down and out. Uh, and I've been, I've been jobless for like two years. Um, it's been really crazy. I mean, I think I lost my job 2000, I think, five or 2006. Or what like kind that. of job allowed Mariah Falabi Brown to go? Interestingly, I was fired. I was still kind of fresh from the U.S. So I had a lot of bad behavior that had to be cleaned out, you know. <laughs> I was fresh from the U.S. I was, you know, I was very, very independent. I didn't want to listen. I, wanted, I didn't want to do tea or coffee, you know. Then I was just trying to listen. I had an opinion and I had to learn. Like, you know, sometimes when you do things, when you're Because it's young, not the same society. It's not the same society. So Out there, you, you, you yeah. can say what you feel exactly. like. Exactly. You can tell your boss off if there's need to. Yes. But that's not what well, Here, I couldn't do that. So... I, I had a lot of issues with my boss at the time and um, I think he fired me but the firing was good because I was able to go back and my mother was able to drill in some things into my head like you know, this, this is a new system you can't come here and be doing this you have to, this is how it's done here and she went through I went through a whole new orientation I mean my mother sat down with me and realized that okay, this girl needs to be reborn so <laughs> she said first of all she got the pastor to so first of all do deliverance remove all the demons that are stressing <laughs> After they finish the deliverance part, uh -huh, now that you are okay. So now this is today putting new things, like putting a new hard disk inside me. And I had to be taking it easy, gradually, and I prayed, I went close to God. I mean, I was down, when I say down and out, down and out, no job. I mean, I came back to Nigeria, I had, I bought a car, I was feeling good myself. Then they stole my car, I lost my job, I was down, like nothing was, I had nothing. So I, I, I had, to, I faced the, the, the part where you're looking for 50 naira just to, just to buy credit, or you're looking. In fact, I didn't even know there was credit credit on that until that period. And it was so bad that it was the offering money during um, after house fellowship that we really used to go and find how to buy food, food that we're going to cook for the week. And when I start scrubbing, how do we return the money? God's money back into the purse for Sunday, you know? Because it was really really tough then. And it was during that period I used to pray hard. I used to ask God to help me to open doors. And actually, somehow miraculously. God opened doors for me, and I thank God for where I am today. Wait, Morayo, you had ever been so broke you had to look for 15 naira to yes. buy credit? I'm telling you, it was that bad. I mean, I said, when, when I left Nigeria, like I was in a middle class family, my parents could afford, but coming back to Nigeria, my dad was old, he had retired, he had a stroke, he wasn't working, my mother had sold everything she had to take care of my dad. So I was coming back to a lower, lower middle class family. So we couldn't really, now my, my mother was totally dependent on the money my brothers, I have, I have four brothers, the money my brother was sending from the US to take care of us. Then I was, then I was still fresh, I had some money on me, but after a while, you can't just always depend on your brothers. So it was just us in Nigeria, myself, my mom, and my dad, just trying to survive in a house, you know. It was really, really tough then. But, um. As I said, during that period, I went close to God and I really asked God to help me. Um, I, I applied to different companies. I mean, I always try to share the testimony of how I got my job, how I got that breakthrough job. Um, I prayed to God that I wanted to have, I wanted, now I already had, even before then, I knew what I wanted to do. And that was probably where I should, I think I should take a few steps back because yeah. I, I asked longest time, even before I came back to Nigeria, I was clear on what my vision was. I knew I wanted to help to impact the lives of Nigerian women, especially. I wanted to help reorientate. That was the word that I held on to. I wanted to reorientate. So that was one of the reasons why I packed my bags because I was going back to Nigeria because I want to help. I, I, one, of, one of the things I hated the most was watching Nigerian movies. Mm -hmm. Not only movies where a man is beating his wife mm -hmm. or where, you know, to solve a problem, you do doing it nomadically where you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're beating up or you're, you're cheating on your wife. Mm -hmm. you're not taking, you know, the whole thing. And I was like, these people need to be reorientated. You shouldn't like, you shouldn't solve problems like this. So yeah. I felt that Nollywood is so impactful that Nollywood is a, is a tool you can use to help reorientate Nigerian. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I need to get into Nollywood. So that was one of the reasons why I came back to Nigeria. So in getting back to Nigeria, I found different jobs and everything, but I was working here and there. So fast track to the point where I lost mm -hmm. my job and I was asking God for a job. And I remember that Father Lord, the reason why I came to Nigeria was I wanted to reorientate. I need to get into television. I mean, I can't just be working for anybody. I want to work in a TV station where I can do a show and I can tell, educate people, educate Nigerians. And then God told me to go to High TV then. Now, High TV, the owner was Tony Subar. Tony Subar was a very popular Lagos guy. Everybody knows Tony Subar. My mother even knew him, my uncle, my auntie, everybody said, Oh, Tony Subar, no, he's a Lagos boy. We can do one. Give me your CV, I'll give it to him. Oh, don't worry, it's my abro, give me your CV. Oh, it's my one, give me your CV. Oh, it's my neighbor, give me. Everybody knew Tony Subar. And I gave the whole of Nigeria my CV to give to this day. <laughs> 
for whatever reason, he never called me. I never heard anything on this to Instagram. I said, I want to work in this company now. I said, I can't pray, Father Lord, this is the company. But I, I, I applied to different places. Mm. So, on the December 23rd, it was the last working day of the year, 2000 and, um, 2007 or 2008, I believe. I think it's 2008. I applied to... I applied to a different company and that company invited me for an interview. I didn't want that company. It was high TV I wanted. So I woke up that morning. I had an interview at 2 p.m. at the other company that I hired that, that called me for an interview. I woke up that morning and said, you know, I'm going to high TV. I don't care. I walked up to high TV. I went to the security guard. I said, I have an appointment with your MD. He said, oh, really? Yeah, sit down. And I called the secretary. Secretary came. Hi, my name is Tyro. Um, sorry, I'm not aware you're coming. Where are you from? I said, madam, please sit down. What is your English? I Sit down, please. Sit down. <laughs> I said, Madam, I don't have um, an appointment, but I actually want to work here. I believe I've prayed. I know this is where God wants to work. So all I want you to do, this is my CV, just put it on your MD's table. That's all. Don't do anything. Don't say you know me. Just put the CV on his table. That's all I ask. She looked at me and because I was teary. My eyes were already teary. She said, okay, I'll do that for you. I said, thank you. And I left. So I went, by that time it was already 2 p.m. I was on my way to the other company, for my interview at 2 p.m. And I sat down with in front of the person that was about to interview me. He had his phone on his right. right it was telling me to give him one minute. While he was on his phone, my own phone rang. He said, "Hello, hi. My name is Tony Subar. I just saw your CV. You're hired. Start January 10th." And that's how I got that job. And the guy said, "Oh, my, really? okay." I mean, so the guy that was about to interview said, ah, "So tell me about yourself." I said, mm, "Don't bother, sir. You know what? I think I just got my dream job. Let me go. Thank you very much. Bye bye." He said, "Oh, really?" He said, "Yeah, got my dream job." And I stood up and I left. So that's how I got high TV job and and God opened doors for me from high TV. Honestly, if I tell you the history, what I went through high TV, God opened doors for me that I went from nothing all the way to senior management level up until the fact where I did so well that the person that brought me to TVC met with my boss in France. We had a meeting in France and he just saw how diligent I was. So when high TV went down and TVC needed somebody, he called me and said, are you still available? I said, yeah. And that's how he bought me I made me director of programs at TBC. Mm -hmm. So God just took me from there to where I am today. And I'm so grateful for him for that. It's amazing because I know a lot of people love you, Morel. A lot of people have um I've listened to a lot of people make comments mm -hmm. about you. And they just think you're doing well. But that's mm -hmm. all they know. Mm -hmm. And so when they have their their issues. They just feel, oh, then, then I could never be like her. Mm. But it's amazing. Tell me, the, tell me. Your view, the, the, your view was, um, has always been a dream for me. And I lived in the U.S. for 10 years of my life. And um, during that time, I mean, I wouldn't go into the story of my accident. I was in a really bad car accident back in 1999. Yeah, I was going to work. And um, 1999? 1999. I was, um, my, my, then uh, my boyfriend, my university boyfriend at the time, was driving a Jeep Wrangler. The rooftop was down. Um, he lost control, the car flipped four times on the, down the hill and we hung on a tree. Wow. And um, they had to get in, they actually fly in people. I mean, it was a helicopter that took me. They, they called 911, people came in. Oh my God, I was hanging. The boy, the, the, my boyfriend at the time, he fell from, while, while all the car was flipping, he fell down. I was still hanging on the tree. So they got a helicopter to pull me out. They brought me out of the, of the tree. Um, they lost me twice on the in helicopter. Nigeria? In the US, in America. <laughs> And um, I was in coma for five days. And um, during that period, of course, my mother flew. I was, I'm, my, I'm my only daughter, so she flew in from Nigeria. Oh. You know, everybody was praying. Then were Muslims, you know, but I was only Christian. I was only Christian. And prayer, people were praying. Churches came from America. The Nigerian churches were coming from Atlanta. They say, Lay, we're churches. Everybody was praying. But a Nigerian girl, that because it was in the news. So my mother was just wondering, ah, these Christian people just come and pray, no collecting money. You know, she was just oh. shocked that that these people could be praying for me. And God walked me through. I was in wheelchair for like four months. I was on crutches for another four months. I was on boots and five, like almost eight months. I was on wheelchair, crutches, and boots. After my mother was stayed with us for that, for that entire period, and she was, I mean, I have two holes. I always talk about my, I have two holes. I have a hole here and I have a hole here. I, I lost all between here and here. I lost my bone. They had to flush it out, so they had to tear my hip. And pull a rod, hold on a straight line. If I tell that the rod is not going to be there for life, they're not going to take it out, you know. And I, I, I had a skull fracture between here all the way to the middle of my head, opened up. So, and I, my lungs collapsed. I have all my body is like, you see, my body is very, very decorated with all sorts of scars. 
and God saved my life. So after that period, my mother gave her life to Christ. She became a Christian. You know, my, my, most of my family members that were Muslims said, "Hey, will you survive this one? No, no, this is your God. I want to know your God." Wow. So they became Christians, and after that accident, I knew that there was something God was giving me a life for. That's why I was hungry to know. Let me find this God. What God? What exactly? You saved me for what exactly? exactly. I wanted to know. Wow. So and I knew that thing was lost in America. So that's when I was resolute to come to Nigeria. And you're, I, went, I wanted to do that Oprah. I was, my dream initially was being the Oprah of Africa, you know, mm -hmm. to the Oprah thing. You know, I always had that dream of helping to impact and change orientation and all that. So I packed my bags. So when I, after, I, after my university, I worked for two years in the U.S. You know what? I'm coming back to Nigeria. I want to come. That thing God saved my life for. I wanted to come to Nigeria for it. So after all that happened in Nigeria, I came to hide the TVC. I told my boss at TVC, he said, you know what? If you're gonna hire me, no problem. I thank you for hiring me, but I want to do my show. I said, for oh, sure, as a director, you can do your shows. I'm not gonna stop you. So that's when the idea for your view started, and um, I prayed about it. God, God, God helped us audition women to come and join me on that on that on that journey, and God just brought the right kind of people together. Yeah. And 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 people watch the show. And I wonder, how did you just bring this? You say it's just good. Because yeah. they are women, they are different, they have different orientation, different background, different exposure. Mm -hmm. So they see things totally differently. And, and that's, what, that's, that's the recipe yeah. that brings yeah. to your view as a, very, as a notable program. Mm -hmm. um, God, God has really been helping us in that show. And, um, and, I, and, I, and, and we're just at the phase where we just started. We're only two and a half years old and people already know so much. So it's we amazing. hope to move better to bigger things. And I, and I sincerely hope that we can actually be more impactful this year. Because I feel that our thinking is warped. A mm -hmm. downfall driver just drives and just parks on the road. When a car driver hits you, he's upset, he hits your windscreen. You know, so many madness out there. People just need to understand that there are better ways to resolve problems. Yeah. You don't have to do it the violence way. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use alcohol. You can actually be civil and have the conversation to mm -hmm. resolve problems mm -hmm. in your homes, in your marriages, in your lives, in your work, in your family, in everything you do. Your there are better stuff. ways of resolving problems. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be through violence. It doesn't have to, because that's, is that violence? That we have where people where there's domestic violence there's rape people are angry they don't have to like, express that anger and they do also heinous crimes upon people mm -hmm. if you're an addict there are ways it doesn't make this the end of the world you're not a bad person you can actually get help mm -hmm. and become a better person so that you can be productive in society all right i think the, the next question i'm going to ask you i think you well deserve to be asked that question okay. what do you think about success what's your view on success and how have you, you know, how have you come through, mm. you know, being where you are with that opinion of success you have, I the view of success you have? I think success is a measurement of your impact on people's lives. It's not so much monetary. It can be monetary, but as long as that money is being used appropriately, then you're successful. Mm. If the monetary, if the money is being used for your own personal needs, it's not success. Success is really a measure of how many lives we've been able to impact and then touch. And for me, I think God is still using me to touch lives. So I believe I've been successful with touching people's lives. And what 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 the success I, I, I like to celebrate is giving people options. Knowing that there are four or five ladies on this program and they see things differently. differently. And it doesn't make them wrong. You have you're entitled to your view that Nigerians must understand because your view is even for my view. It's, no, no, doesn't, that make, doesn't us make us quarrel. Enemies. Exactly. Exactly. You yeah. must begin to respect people's views. That's why people call, oh I don't like you. You know what I say? It's okay. It doesn't make me You a don't bad have person. to like me. Yes. But there's somebody else who likes yes. me out there yes. who may share exactly. my view. Exactly. So that's why we must begin to respect people's views. And that's I think is one of the successes I have been able to use this program to achieve. As we round up, out there, there are a lot of people who want to be Mariah. Oh, I like the way Mariah mm. goes about this. Everybody thinks Mariah mm. is so all together. Mm. Everybody thinks Mariah's got it. So mm. you actually have it. You've come here to put something into Nigerians. Yeah. That's why you return. Yeah. And there are people out there who want to be like you, okay. who truly admire you, but they are not. They haven't really found their faith. Mm. They, they don't know where to go from where they're standing. How, what, what are the details? How do you want to tell them, now go this way, go that way. What, how do you want to mentor right. somebody out there? Because it's a mentorship uh, site, you say. I would leave anybody watching with five things that I do. Um, first of all, you must find the Holy Spirit. You must have communion with God because once you do that, He directs you. He's the only one that can direct you. That's the truth. It's not about what your pastor said. 
It's not about what pastor said at all. It's experience what you hear yourself in that private moment. <clears throat> That's the Holy Spirit part. Number two, you must find purpose early. As a young person, find what God has called you to do. Ask him, why did you create me? There's got to be something you want me to do. There's a problem that was created to solve. What is that thing that puts you to cry? What's that thing that you hate so much that, that pushes you to anger? Is it that you don't like just his death? You don't like death. Maybe it's your problem to actually help solve Nigeria's death problem. So find that thing that you hate so much and know that you've been called to solve it. Thirdly, humility. you got to be humble. A lot of people just believe they know it all. Humility takes you very far. When you act like my, my brother always tells me something that you're not as dumb as you look. When I was younger, I used to think you used to abuse me. I, I used to think it was a yab. But actually, as I was growing up, I said, actually, I'm not as dumb as I look. I might look dumb, act dumb, but I'm not dumb. But you see, the dumbness that I look like make people think, oh, she doesn't know. Let us explain to her. Let us. And I now get so much juice from them. It's the humility. Yeah. Yeah. Thirdly, uh, fourthly, is relationship. You can't get too far if you don't have good relationship behavior. You have to have a good relationship with people. You got to relate to people well. You got to be nice to people. You have to be courteous. Understand that in this life, you can't do it alone. You always need people. Mm -hmm. So relationship. And finally, and for me, most importantly, leadership. In our smallest capacity, you got to be a leader. No matter how small, in whatever thing you're doing, in your small home, in your family, in your job, anything, you're a leader. Everybody is a leader somehow. Either you're a leader to the security guard, or leader to the gatesman, or leader to the house help. You're a leader. And as a leader, you must have leadership qualities. And those leadership qualities are what you now learn and harness, makes you a better person wherever you find yourself in top. So those five pillars are what I use, and I hope it can help you too. Morel, really, this is a, a word for excellence. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll give it to people like you who have done so well, who have thought of their motherland. Okay. This is from Home Ec Ferry, one of our sponsors. Aww. Thank okay. you for coming. Thank you so much. Please come again. I will. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, you heard Mariah. She said five things you need to do. <laughs> Time will not permit me to go through them. But you know you need the Holy Spirit. You know you need an inner guardian. That's what she said. Yeah. That's her word. You need to be guided and you need to find purpose early in life. Don't just nag and, and holler over the things you hate and the things that keep you uncomfortable. They may just be purpose for living for you. And finally she said, you got to be a leader. Everybody is a leader. You're, I know you're a follower, but don't get lost being a follower. There are people watching and following you too. You are a leader. So take up that responsibility and be a leader. That's from Morayo of Alabi Brown. And from me, I say, if you can wait long enough, if you can just wait long enough in focus on faith, you just discovered that all you thought you lost all the time and time passed just comes running and hugging and living with you and until we come your way next week from Mariah and I it's bye